from sin and be faithful to the gospel. Remember you are dust and to dust you will return. Repent, the kingdom is at hand. Rend your hearts, not your garments. Acceptable time. Turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. Remember you are dust and to dust you will return. Welcome to those who gather here and those who gather in their sacred space or their home, their apartment or their condo, wherever you are at this moment, let us pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. It is certainly true we live in a most unusual and still precarious time we indeed look forward to the healing and the protection of our bodies and our minds in this COVID time. But as we approach this new season of Lent, we come to you asking that as a community of faith, as family and friends, we ask God's grace to heal our spirits, to renew our hope, and the grace to live for the sake of others. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting, this campaign of Christian service and love, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. If you are standing at home, please, if you would, be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me, with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests the ministers of the Lord weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful. Have mercy on me, God, in your 
kindness, in your compassion, blot out my offense. Oh, wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Be merciful. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I heard you, and on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, pardon not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. My sisters, my brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went on to say to his disciples, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. And so when you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your almsgiving may be in secret. And the Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. And then I say to you, they have already received the reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, 
Do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The gospel, the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The blessing and the placing of ashes either on our foreheads or on the top of our head, which is a much larger, more universal custom, sprinkling of the ashes on the crown of our head, it would seem to be hypocritical or in contrast to Matthew's account of don't go public about what you're doing. But it's a sign to others of what we are about to do, not necessarily what we're doing because really Ash Wednesday is the first day. But for the entire season of Lent, we live it out in a different way, a different practice. Why do Lent at all? What is this all about? It seems to me that it provokes something very human within us, something that there is a fundamental human need. For most of us who are working, we get our agendas set for the week. We work out our calendars and we kind of put everything together. There's a day to put everything in place for the week that is to come. If we're students, we tend to get everything lined up if we're decent students, uh, like the Normandin kids, I'm sure, were at Modern Day and Queen of Angels. But there's that sense that you kind of organize your book bag, you make sure your iPad or your computer's set up, you've done your homework, you've sharpened your under pencils, all of that for the week ahead. Moms oftentimes go shopping to, whether it's Costco or Walmart or Ralph's, wherever it is, to get things ready for that which is to come. This is simply what Ash Wednesday is saying, that we are getting ready to mark a moment that as human beings is significant in our journey of faith. We mark significant moments all the time, and we repeat them every year whether it's an anniversary or a birthday or the day that someone went home to the Lord, and we mark that day not just on a calendar, but we mark it in our minds and in our hearts, in our memories. And so the season of Lent is that marking of what we are preparing to do. And that is something that really is not just a moment or six weeks, but it's really the lifetime of remembering who God is and who we are and what he has called us to become. As St. Paul says in the second scripture, ambassadors for Christ. So as we go forward into this season of Lent, find that sweet spot, find that area of your life where you say, you know, I need to mark this time and work on this corner of my life or this corner of my heart to let go of regrets or old hurts or some way to spend more time with the one who is Jesus. Carve out that space in your mind and your heart and your life by allowing yourself to be signed or sprinkled on the crown of your head is a sign really a little bit to the rest of the world but really to ourselves of who we are and we, where we are destined to go, where ultimately our true homeland really is, not here, but home with the Lord. There's a great little book in a series that Dynamic Catholic with Matt Kelly offers us this season of Lent, and I'm making myself, and I know some of the other priests are as well, and much of the staff, make a commitment to do a daily walk, especially in the area of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. That sense that we move outside of our own tendency to be rather narcissistic or self-focused 
and realize that prayer brings us into union with someone greater than ourselves. That fasting reminds us of what do we really hunger for, our next meal or the Eucharistic bread of heaven. Of almsgiving that reminds us that we are not just solo participants in this world, but that we are ultimately and intimately, deeply united with each other, especially those who are in need of our help and our capabilities. So, the season of Lent, allow yourself to be marked today, externally, but internally going forward with Christ. If you're at home and about ready to uh, prepare the uh, ashes that you have, uh, we have this little booklet that you can follow along with, or else just listen to the prayers as we now go forward. Let us pray. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of grace these ashes which we will place on our heads in penitence. For those of you at home with a small amount of ashes to sign you and your family, please place now the ashes before you. O God, who desire not the death of sinners but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers today, and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust may through a steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for our sins and newness of life after the likeness of your risen Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now if you would like, if you are holding the ashes and anyone else is there with you, to please uh, have them come forward and you can trace the sign of the cross on their forehead or else you can sprinkle a little bit on the crown of their head and the beautiful uh, prayer that you would pray is repent, and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. For those also who are at home and would like to come to our drive-by um, blessing and sharing of ashes, that'll be at 6.30, noon, and 5.30 p.m. As we then begin our Lenten journey, may we turn to the Lord with humble and contrite hearts, trusting that in his mercy our God will hear and answer our prayers. For the Church of God, that this Lenten season will bring true conversion to church leaders and all the Catholic faithful, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace throughout the world and among the nations, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially within our community. May they receive healing from the Lord 
and support from one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed away from this life, together with the Blessed Mother and all the saints, may they be united to God in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Then, with Jesus, we lift our hearts and our minds to the Father as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us gather our prayer. Pour out, Lord, a spirit of compunction on those who bow before your majesty, and by your great mercy may they merit the rewards that you promise to those who do penance. We ask you all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all this day, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then be in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Amen.